Well, my guest today is Brian Head Welch, the former guitarist of Korn, one of the most successful heavy metal bands of all time. Brian quickly learned that the fame and accolades he achieved had a very dark side, and he developed, in a, developed a crippling addiction to meth, alcohol, and other damaging behaviors. After years of suffering through his addiction, Brian walked into a church in 2005 and gave his life to Christ. Today, he has captured his incredible true life story in his new book, Washed by Blood. Would you please welcome with me Brian Head Welch? <laughs> Brian, God loves you, and so do I. Thank you. I, I think you're better dressed for uh, the weather today than I am. Yeah. It's and, quite warm. Uh, quite warm. You know, at the last service, I took my jacket off, so I'm going to take it off again this service. All right, all right. And, and I'm doing this just for you, you know. Okay. Yeah, uh, there's sure. no personal motivation sure. in me taking my jacket off by any stretch of the imagination. But <laughs> I, I'm kidding, of course. But take us back to, um, to the corn days. What was it like being a member of the band? And uh, what was some of the dark side that you had to face? It was a wild, wild ride. We just... Uh, a bunch of crazy kids grew up together into heavy metal and uh, just started playing in some bands around um, Bakersfield, California and ended up moving to L.A. and uh, we got a record deal, you know, it just we got our singer and it just kind of clicked and people noticed and next thing you know I was touring with my childhood heroes, Ozzy Osbourne and, and uh, it was just a while, it was like kind of going like a frat party just it, it just kept going and it was you know wild boys having fun you know drinking playing heavy metal and then uh, as the years went by the the drugs progressed and the party got heavier and the the alcohol wasn't enough and then we moved up to you know uh, marijuana and cocaine and then I ended up with a uh, a crippling addiction to methamphetamines towards the end so it takes over your life totally totally your emotions I'm, I mean I, the many times I was just I was mixing so many drugs, I was out of my mind thinking that I wish I would just die because I got my childhood dream came true and I'm like miserable and a drug addict and I, I felt like I was no good for anybody. What really was the impetus that would really brought you to a church? In 2005, you just walked into a church. Why did you do that? Well, I had a couple, uh, I was a closet junkie, so I had a couple uh, real estate friends I was doing business with, you know, I was like, a junkie behind closed doors, but in front of people, I was like, you know, Mr. Together. And uh, I was doing all these big real estate deals, and, and they, uh, they invited me to church because I, I was sending them emails, and just, I was, I think they could sense how I wasn't happy, and uh, I wanted to go, but I didn't want to go because I was like, I was a rock star, you know, and I didn't want to go to go into a church all high on meth, because I did. I stayed up all night when I went to that church, but I went there, and the pastor... Uh, put up the scripture, uh, which I have on my neck, uh, Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I was so, I mean, I try to explain how much of a gutter I was in, but it's, the words can't express how in hell I was. And when, when, that, when I saw that scripture, it just felt like a big old tall, like a, a big old Gatorade bottle this size of this room, and I was stranded in a <laughs> desert, and I was just... I wanted it to be true, I didn't know, and he said if you just hang out with Jesus and talk to him, that he would take all the bad things to fall off in your, in your life. So I went home and I did drugs and talked to Jesus and said, Lord, you know I don't want to do this stuff. I've got to live for my kid. I'm going to die if I, if, I, uh, if I keep going. If you're real, like he says, please take these from me. And uh, within a couple of weeks, I, just, I felt the presence of God come into my house where I was doing drugs, and I felt him just... I didn't hear him. I just felt his love, and I instantly just threw the drugs away, and I've been changed ever since, and I just love God. I'm so thankful that he spared me. You're dedicating your life now to, to helping, helping people make a difference in, in the world, aren't you? Yeah, with, with my music, you know, I, I tried to change my music style because I thought God would want me to be lighter and stuff, and he led me to go... Uh, to just be who I am, you know, and, and, and do the heavy music with a heavy message and reach these kids, you know, that that uh, love that stuff. And I love it, too. And uh, he changed me inside, and I still look ragged on the outside, but my heart's new, and uh, <laughs> it's all good. He's good.
<laughs> so you've written a book. It's entitled "Washed by Blood," and uh, what do you what do you hope people get out of this book? Just that you know God's grace and mercy. I. I, I partied like I was Satan himself for so many years, and I deserved, you know, to be separated from him forever. And he just, you know, he could have came down and said, well, I saw you do this. I saw you, you know, judge, judge, judge. But all he said was, I love you. And the presence of love came over me, and it changed me. And, and, and he's, just, he's just so awesome, you know. God bless you, Brian. God, bless God you. loves you. And so do we. Right on. Thank you. Thanks for having me.